Morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Prayer at the Church of the Atonement. It is Friday in the ninth week after Pentecost, which is July 26th, 2024. This morning, we are celebrating the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And uh, I will read the bit that the Brotherhood of St. Gregory has uh, shared with us. The Gospels tell us little about the home of our Lord's mother. She was thought to have been of Davianic descent and to have been <clears throat> brought up in a devout Jewish family that cherished the hope of Israel for the coming of the kingdom of God in the remembrance of the promise to Abraham and his descendants. In the second century, devout Christians sought to supply a more complete account of Mary's birth and family to satisfy the interests and curiosity of believers. An apocryphal gospel known as the Proto-Evangelism uh, Evangelum of James or the Nativity of Mary appeared in... Uh, it includes legendary stories about Mary's parents, uh, Joachim and Anne. These stories were built out of the Old Testament narratives of the birth of Isaac and, and of Samuel, whose mother's name was Hannah. It is the original form of Anne. And from these traditions of the birth of uh, John the Baptist, in these stories, um, Joachim uh, and uh, and the childless elderly couple who grieved that they would have no pros, uh, posterity were rewarded with the birth of a girl whom they dedicated in infancy to the service of God under the tutelage of the temple priests. In 550, the emperor Justinian I erected in Constantinople the first church to St. Anne. The Eastern churches observed her uh, festival on July 25th, not until the 12th, 12th century, uh, did her feast become known in the West. Pope Urban the uh, the Sixth fixed her day in the year 1378 to follow the Feast of St. James. Uh, Joachim uh, has had several dates assigned to his memory, but the new Roman calendar of 1969 joined his festival to that of Anne on this day. And so we remember Mary's parents uh, today as we say the morning service. Let's take a breath and we'll get started. <clears throat> Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And we continue this morning with the Vanite, followed by portions of Psalm 119. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. And we'll begin uh, in the middle of Psalm 119 with verses 105. And we'll be going through to uh, the end in uh, Psalm 144. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. 
Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fill your statutes forever and to the end. I hate those who have a divided heart. But your law do I love. You are my refuge and my shield. My hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked. I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live. And let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up and I shall be safe. And my delight shall ever be in your statutes. You spurn those who stray from your statutes. Their deceitfulness is in vain. In your sight, all the wicked of the earth are but dross. Therefore, I love your decrees. My flesh trembles with dread, the dread of you. I am afraid of your judgments. I have done what is right, just and right. Do not deliver me from my oppressors. Be surety for your servants' good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes have failed from watching for your salvation and for your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your loving kindness and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Grant me understanding that I may know your decrees. It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have broken your law. Truly, I love your commandments more than gold and precious stones. I hold all your commandments to be right for me. All paths of falsehood I abhor. Your decrees are wonderful. Therefore, I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant. I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let those let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed, stre shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. You are righteous, O Lord, and upright sorry, and upright in your judgments. You have issued your decrees with justice in perfect faithfulness. My indignation has consumed me because my enemies forget your words. Your word has been tested to the uttermost, and your servant holds it dear. I am small and little of little account, yet I do not forget your commandments. Your justice is an everlasting justice, and your law is the truth. Trouble and distress have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. The righteousness of your decrees is everlasting. Grant me understanding that I may live. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Joshua in the ninth and 10th chapters. <clears throat> Joshua summoned the Gibeonites and said to them, why did you deceive us saying, we are very far from you, while in fact you are living among us? Now therefore you are cursed, and some of you shall always be slaves, hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua, because it was told to your servants for a certainty that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses 
to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you. So we were in great fear for our lives because of you and did this thing. And now you are here uh, in our hand. Do as uh, it seems right, good and right in your sight to do to us. This is what he did for them. He saved them from the Israelites and they did not kill them. But on that day, Joshua made them hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord to continue to this day in the place he should choose. When King Adonazedek of Jerusalem heard how Joshua had taken uh, Eli, or Ai, 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 I guess, and had utterly destroyed it, and doing to Ai uh, and its king, he had gone, had done to Jericho and its king, how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. He became brightly frightened because Gibeon was a large city, like one of the royal cities and was larger than Ai. And all uh, its men and women, or sorry, men were warriors. So King Adana Zedek of Jerusalem sent a message to King Hoham of Hebron and to King uh, Param of Jarmuth and King Japhia of Lachish and to King uh, Debir of Eglon saying, come up and help me and let us attack Gibeon for it has made peace with Joshua and for the Israelites and with the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Amorites and the king of Jerusalem and the king of Hebron and the king of Jarmuth and the king of Lachish and the king of Eglon gathered their forces and went up and with all their armies and camped against Gibeon and made war against it. And the Gibeonites sent to Joshua at the camp in Gilgal, saying, Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who live in the hill country are gathered uh, against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the fighting force with him, all the mighty warriors. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear, uh, do not fear them, for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came up, and then suddenly, having marched all the night from Gilgal, and the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who inflicted great, a great slaughter on them at Gibeon, chased them by the way of the ascent of Beth Horon, and struck them down as far as uh, as Azaka and Ma. Uh, Mekada, and they fled before Israel while they were uh, going down the slope of Beth Haran, and the Lord threw down huge stones from heaven on them, and as far as Azekah, uh, and they died. There were more uh, who died because of the hillstones than the Israelites killed with the sword. On the day when the Lord had given the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua spoke to the Lord and said in the sight of Israel, Sun stand still at Gibeon and moon in the valley of uh, Ajaloran. And the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. It is, uh, is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped in the mid heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day, and there had been no day like it before or since when the Lord uh, heeded a human voice, for the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. Here ends the reading. We continue this morning with the uh, Canticle 10, which is the second song of Isaiah. <coughs> Excuse me. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways. My ways say, says the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning's second reading comes from the letter, uh, Paul's letter to the Romans in the 15th chapter. I myself feel confident about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. Nevertheless, on some points I have written to you boldly by way of a reminder, because of the grace given to me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus, to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to boast of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and as far around as uh, Ikath, uh, uh, Irica, uh, Iricacum, I have fully uh, proclaimed the good news of Christ. Thus I made it my ambition to proclaim the good news, not where Christ has already been named, so that I do not build on someone else's foundation, but as it is written, those who have never been told of him shall see and those who have never heard of him shall understand this is the reason that i have so often been hindered from coming to you but now with no further place for me in these regions i desire as i have for many years to come to you when i go uh, to spain for i do not see you uh, I, for i do not hope to see you on my journey and to be sent on uh, by you, once I have enjoyed your company for a little while. Here ends the reading. Our second canticle this morning is Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and had their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne into Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and evermore. And we continue this morning with the Apostles' Creed followed by the Our Father using the traditional language. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we continue with Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. 
Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we remember in Thanksgiving this day the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and we pray that we may be made one heavenly family of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went up not to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, might find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and, serve, truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. During this week of uh, July uh, 21st, 2024, we pray for the sick, for those in any need or trouble, and for those who have asked for our prayers. For Ellen, Mike, Steve, Rob L, Cheryl, Sean, Jonathan, Devon, Killian, Dennis, Mark, former President Carter, all with COVID-19, Kelly, Miller, Jason, Harry, Tyler, Cecilia, Ron E, Jim, Bill, Andrea, Karen, Janice, John, Kurt, all who mourn, especially Tom, for Ken, Deacon, Elizabeth, uh, Janine, David, Thomas, and Greg Priests. For an end to war and violence, especially in the Middle East and in Ukraine, and we pray for justice and for an end to violence and division in our neighborhoods, city, and nation. For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica, Kay, Larry, Karin, Lee, Carey, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, and for all families and children in this city and state, and for all expected parents, and for all prisoners. For members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott, Serena's security in Iraq. For Paula, our bishop, and Charles, our rector, for Amanda and Dave, our wardens, for the members of our vestry, for our presiding bishop-elect, Sean, and for our sister parishes of St. Benedict and St. Matthews in Chiapas, Mexico. And this week, we remember the birthdays of Ron Witherow, Alessa Trapp, Patty Garland, Norland Stand, uh, Standler, and Charlie Sega. And we commemorate the anniversaries of, uh, wedding anniversary of Michael uh, Chapolo, and Miguel Diaz, and tomorrow the life profession anniversary in the Brotherhood of St. Gregory of Brother Ron Fox. And we remember the departed, Maria uh, Rogue, Joanne Gorgon, Nancy Bonilla, w uh, William Benefield Sr., Chicago letter carrier, carrier Octavia Redmond, and Bob Newhart. And at the anniversaries of their death, we remember Ellen Kay, Muriel Louise Iverson, Karen uh, Witten, uh, Whitner, Hans J. Uh, Pocott, and Wil uh, Wilma Anderson. And we pray for peace. O oh God, the Father of all, whose Son commanded us to love our enemies, lead them and us from prejudice to truth, deliver them and us from hatred cruelty, and revenge, and in your good time, enable us all to stand reconciled before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue this morning with the general thanksgiving, followed by the prayer of St. Christopherson. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and for all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining this morning. Remember, we're here every morning at the Church of the Atonement in Chicago at 8.30 for morning prayer. Our Sunday services are 8, 9, and 11. The 11 o'clock service is also broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Thanks, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Take care, and bye-bye.